Bueller, Bueller, Bueller. I think we all have seen this before. Ferris Bueller's Day Off, where, um, you know, this is a, a great example of traditional teaching. It's that monotoned, very, uh, you know, not, not that engaging. We've, we've all had a teacher like this in our life. We've all had teaching like this. But is there a way to change this? Is there a way to learn in a different manner? Yes. The flip classroom is what I'm writing about, is what my hypothesis is toward. What is a flip classroom? How much time is involved? Is there is it time effective? What kind of media is used? Is it a personalized education for students? Is it student-centered? These are all questions that will be answered throughout this presentation. So defining a flipped classroom, you learn your content at home and homework at school. So students are at home and they watch their, their video lecture that the teacher created and designed. And then when they get back to school, they're working on homework and in quotes because it's independent practice. But that's what they're doing. They're working with the teacher. They're working with their peers to work on this assignment. So it's more engaging. Here's a great example of a flipped classroom. I found this online. It's, it's kind of got that uh, South Park kind of cartoony kind of feel to it. But the traditional classroom is right up here. Here's the, here's the teacher, his lecturing, his students all in a row, kind of monotone, that Ferris Bueller kind of esque. And then when classroom time is done, when school is done, students go home and they're working on their assignment, working on their homework. See, this kid's very confused because he, he doesn't remember what, what the lecture said. But in the flipped classroom, here's a teacher's lecture. He created this lecture. You can see he is, he's a teacher, but here he is in the, in the computer. Student watches the lecture. He can watch it as many times as he wants. He can stop it, pause it. And then when you get to school the next day, the student reviews it, the student has answers answers and questions like questions and answers from the teacher. And then the teacher, you know, will can one on one with individual students or groups of students. And then there's a lot more going on. There's a lot more work going on. So this this you're kind of cutting out this confusion. Uh, full classrooms are very time effective. The lecturing is gone. That that class lecture is gone. Like there's there's no more of it. It's now it's at home. Students can watch a video at home. So you got you eliminate that whole lecture aspect. Learning the new material at school. And ultimately, students learn at their own pace. Students are learning <coughs> to stop and pause the the lecture. If, if they don't get it, they can watch it again. Or if they need to, they can just kind of fast forward it. And they become their own teacher in a sense. They're, they're learning how to micromanage. They're learning to teach themselves through, through these videos. And ultimately, class time now is for a warm-up. It's for review. It's for independent practice. Or students, you know, warm up on whatever whatever the teacher is going on, maybe like a five minute activity, and then there's a review session, and maybe a Q and A. And then for the rest of the time, nearly eighty percent of the time, students are working on independent practice. They're working on whatever is whatever is going on. They're more engaged. They're more focused on that activity. And they can learn better. They can just like in in an art classroom, what I what my specialty is is that students have that independent practice time to work on art, to work on their drawing, their painting, their sculpture, their ceramics. And th this can be this can be for any grade, in any grade level. So Jonathan Bergman and Aaron Sims, these are two teachers that they are essentially chemistry teachers. And they're I'm not saying they're the first ones to do flip flip classrooms. But they were on that bandwagon, the original bandwagon, for, flip for flipping a classroom. And, and this quote's really cool because they, 
they, their students, were completing all their work with 20 minutes left in class. So they, they were getting so much work done that they had that 20 minutes left to work on independent practice, to work on more questions and an, more if they need if they need a question answered the teacher can go work with them individually because there's that 20 minutes left this is like a teacher's dream to have that and this is essentially what from Bergman and Sims uh, like a graph that I completed but it's comparing the classroom time the the classroom time where a traditional classroom up here has a warm up it has that review of homework, whatever that last night's was. And then you have the new material slash lecture. And then it goes into guided practice and independent practice. This is very traditional. This is what we've been learning at, in education for I don't know how long, for decades. But when you go to a flip classroom, you can immediately tell that, wait, where's a... Uh, Where's the lecture? Where's that new content? It's it's essentially in here. You got the warm up. You have the Q and A slash. If students didn't watch the video, you could you could even have students watch the video right then and there. It's probably five ten minutes. And then eighty percent of the class, or a good chunk of time, is for that guided practice, for that independent practice. So students are working. Students are actually getting their hands on activities or whatever that interactive time they're working with their peers and the teacher so full classrooms have a preferred media it's it's usually youtube or vimeo it's usually these where, where teachers create that lecture and they put it out there for students to watch but students you know they they know youtube they know vimeo they know different blogs they know facebook they know twitter they know snapchat i mean these are things that students know and, and as educators, we need to be using and utilizing these tools so that students can learn to become their own teacher, learn to become that lifelong learner down the line. And really interesting that teachers, you know, they use Screencast-O-Matic. They use Livestream. I don't know if you've known this, but we have all been flipping a classroom in this course, in this technology course. If you did not know that already, that's really interesting because, you know, we've all made these lectures, we've all made these PowerPoints, and this is what this is what teachers do. They make it on Screencast-O-Matic, they make it on Livestream, and then they post it up on YouTube. So we've all flipped a classroom, so that's really cool. And here's a, here's again, here's a student utilizing her iPhone. Like, she's listening to a podcast, and that's also flipping a classroom. Teacher makes that podcast. It doesn't have to be visual. Students maybe want to listen to it. Maybe they're listening to the lecture. And then they're taking notes. Like, she's probably in maybe fourth, fifth grade, maybe sixth grade. I don't know, seventh. But, like, she's already taking notes based off a lecture. I feel like this is, like, a college-level activity. And then um, here's YouTube. This is where, essentially, most teachers incorporate flip classrooms. And then... Flipping a classroom involves personalized education. This is this is meeting student needs, meeting individual learning. Students that are a little bit slower, a little bit behind, they can stop, play, and fast forward. Whereas students that are more gifted can continue on. Can can if they get this lecture, maybe they can move on to the next lecture, and they can just kind of excel, and they can they can learn at their own pace. This is creating self-driven students. And of course, this is, this is student-centered learning. I mean, almost every teacher out there wants to create that student-centered philosophy. And it's using, utilizing phones, computers, tablets. And here's a tablet, of course. And it increased performance. This is, flip classrooms are increasing student performance. So uh, this, this one... um guy out there, Lewis, Lewis D. I'm gonna I don't know his, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, but I'm gonna call him Lewis D. He's a professor at the University of British Columbia. And he took eight hundred undergrads and what he found out was that this control group, a traditional classroom, they average scored about forty one percent. 
compared to this experimental group, which is the flipped classroom, which scored about an average of 74%. So here's another graph that I created. You can see that in the blue is the control group, that traditional classroom, compared to the red, which is a flipped classroom. It just it's it's astounding that the average is like right here. Like this this average is about half. Whereas over here the average is about 77%. It's almost night and day difference. It's like you know, almost doubles from a traditional classroom to an, a flipped classroom. And then again, this is what a traditional classroom and flipped classroom look like. You got the lecture in the traditional classroom and then the homework. And then a flipped classroom, you have the lecture with the student, and then you come back and do that activity, do that homework assignment within a bunch of peers or with the teacher. My references. So thank you for watching and hope you understand that flipping a classroom is so beneficial to student growth.